Okay, so once again, for, for the third part of, uh, for the third sequence in this talk, um, we have Roman talking about uh, gaps, types, and pairs of models of, arith of arithmetic. Okay, thank you, Atar, and thank you all for coming back. Uh, as you can see, this is part four, and this is something that actually I was intended, uh, intending to talk about when I was thinking of giving the talk. And while I started preparing my notes for this talk, for this part of the talk, I realized there is much to say in terms of motivation and an introduction and some preliminary results. So the previous two talks were really in, in introduction to, to what's going to happen now. And uh, what I will be talking about is what is in our joint, my joint paper with Jim from uh, 2012. Uh, with a title that I don't even remember, but it, it will be about uh, something about interstices and uh, cofinal extensions. So cofinal extensions, we know interstices, I will, I will introduce. So uh, oh, let's see what's happening now. Okay, so, so this is what, what we've done so far. This is a brief summary of what, what, what I did uh, in the last two weeks. So, um, well, the part three was about uh, Jim's paper on saturated models and, and elementary cuts in saturated models, and it's of separate interest. And I was just, uh, I just did a survey of, of, of Jim's results there. And it's a very interesting paper, and I encourage all of you to take a look at that paper. Uh, but so we're going back to the countable case. So M is uh, again a countable and regards the saturated model of PA. So I will not be saying PA all the time, and I'm you know, countable. M always stand for a countable recursively saturated model of PA. And we have been looking at case one mostly, that really two separate cases. The, the whole point is to, uh, take, to take a look at first of the theories of pairs, uh, a model of arithmetic and uh, it, a predicate uh, with uh, a subset that is an elementary submodel. So if that elementary submodel happens to be an end extension, then from the results that I reviewed so far, it seems that the, to a large extent, the whole uh, information about the pair can be reduced to really what's happening uh, uh, at the cut. So, so what you're looking at to so know something about the theory of the, of the pair or just the isomorphic type of the pair, you're looking at the cut itself, and then you look at the set of subsets of the, of the submodel that are coded in the extension. And that gives rise to all kinds of considerations because these are models of fragments of uh, second uh, order arithmetic. They're all models of um, either the, of exploitation, uh, and then, uh, you can impose stronger uh, stronger axioms on what the, what this family actually satisfies, and you get all kinds of results uh, about the isomorphic types of pairs. Uh, beyond that, there is really very little that one can say, that, that all the information seems to be coded in, in those pairs. But now if you go to other kind of extensions, and in particular cofinal extensions, then uh, the situation is different. And this is this case too. Uh, this is really uh, the theorem of uh, Craig Smorinsky. It's in just one line, and it says, well, look at the model M and look at all theories so this is just a theory of, first of all, the theory of the cut. This is greatest common initial segment of M and K. So K is a cofinal extension. So this greater common uh, initial segment uh, is something that's uh, a cut in M, a proper cut in M. It always includes the standard part. And uh, Craig uh, Swinsky proved many results about what these uh, well uh, in, uh, initial segments can be. Essentially, any initial segment uh, that is closed under addition and multiplication can be represented in this way for some uh, cofinal sub submodel of M. But also uh, an observation is that, uh, you know, since almost any cut can be this greater common initial segments, and there are continue many different first of the theories of cuts, even when you restrict those cuts to models of PA. So this gives you a great variety uh, of isomorphism types of pairs, but it's already this variety is already witnessed by the, uh, the theory first of the theory of the greatest common initial segment. So this is what I call. So here we have uh, combinatorial principles. We have fragments of second order arithmetic. So th this is what I call uh, meaningful theories of cuts. There is something of interest that we want to express uh, in those first order theories, 
And this sort of uh, diversity, so, sort of set theoretic diversity, that essentially it means that in those theories of, of pairs, you can code any subset of natural numbers. And this whole theory is really so the, the theory is different, differ because they, they represent uh, different uh, sets of subsets of natural numbers. So this is kind of more of a theoretic nature. It has very little to do with the nature of those, of the first order nature of the structures. So, so for the rest of the talk, the main question is, okay, so this is Sporinsky's result. This is when you vary the greatest common initial segment, then you get continuum uh, theories. But what, what else can you say about the structure of, of a, uh, of a pair, uh, how some description of how a cofinal submodule sits inside uh, itself, and what uh, how much of that information can be expressed in the first order way. So let's see. So so what so so in, essentially we're looking for uh, another kind of uh, isomorphism variant, and there are many things one can choose from. Uh, from and Jim and I uh, we decided to look at just one more additional. Uh, it comes of were introduced. Some of you may know this paper, the old paper of myself, Henry Kotlarski, and Richard Kay. And in thesis were introduced there to study the act of the automorphism group on um, the cut that is supremum of uh, definable elements in the model. This is the case of models of false arithmetic. And that's where those uh, interstices were defined, but not named. And then uh, Bamber and uh, Nicholas Bamber and Henry Kotlarski wrote a paper uh, studying this further, and they named them interstices. So this is a picture of what an in, what interstices are. But this is so we, we generalize this. So in uh, those papers, this was only done for a submodel K that's the supremum of definable elements. But we just take any submodel now. So those the shaded parts is the submodel K and you look elements outside. And so these uh, intervals here marked on the picture are interstices. So these are the largest convex subsets of the model that, you know, so this is an interstice of A, the largest convex subset of the model that, that, that contains A. So, okay. uh, yeah. Right, uh, what, what's, what's I here? What is what? I? Anything. So this is so. So <laughs> this. Is, so what is being defined is an interstice of A. So, so should that be A inside the skull closure? No, no. So A is an element. So you look at the, so those elements. So it's like on the okay. picture. A and B are not in K. Take any element that's not in K, and then you look at the largest convex subset of the model uh, that contains A. That's the interstice of A. Okay. And then, and then you look at another element somewhere else that's also not in K in a different interstice, and that's the interstice of B. Yeah, those, those are those big omega K of B. So interstices like gaps, but with respect to this uh, submodel K. Cool. Okay. Sorry. No, no. There's, there's no, no notation oh. here, and and and, and uh, symbols are actually not very well chosen, but this is tradition. So, Roman, can I ask what the Role of the K is no. This is this is the interstice depends on K. So for each each K has its own interstices. So first you have a K that's a say think of K being a cofinal submodel, or not an end, not a cut. So this becomes a sort of meaningful notion. So there must be so there must be so each cofinal submodel has those non-trivial interstices bounded uh, intervals like that, and so. In a sense, though, this picture already tells you that there is much to look at in the structure of a cofinal submodel, because to understand how this cofinal submodel K sits in M, you really need to understand the structure of each gap of each of those interstices and also how those interstices uh, relate to one another. And in the case of this, of what happens uh, in this uh, smallest elementary submodel cut here, in the case of false arithmetic, this turned out to be actually quite complicated story because those interstices, well, there are no elementary submodels here in uh, no elementary cuts in, the, in this uh, supremum of this column closure of zero. So those interstices exist, there are you know, the countably many interstices, but they have different closure properties. The theories are all different and the behave, what, what's happening there inside each interstice, interstice and how the automorphism groups acts on those undefinable element in each interstice depends on the size 
and there are very, various ways of measuring sizes of those interstices. There are very good inter interstices and, and excellent interstices and other kinds of interstices. And, and it becomes a very complicated story. So there's a whole study of what's happening down there. So, so what we do, we, we forget about all of this. Uh, we go above the column closure and we'll be looking at particular kind of interstices. Are there any other questions? about what those interstices are, because you haven't seen, Jim has seen them before, but none of you has seen them before. Okay. We've okay. seen pictures like this before, are you shown? Well, sure, oh, but this is a universal picture. It, it sort of can be used for anything. Yeah, those little A's and little B's, we've seen them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those are the same A's and B's actually, as always. Okay, so, Look, and so this is a formal definition, but everything else was already on the slide. So, so this is so we have uh, an elementary submodel. Any elementary submodel, you take an element uh, in the complement, and the k in interstices of A, it's as denoted on the on the picture, is the largest convex subset that contains A as disjoints from K. And I'll be using those uh, special so, uh, and each interstice, you know, this is this is an interval, and it has a supremum and infimum. So, uh, so this is minus and plus, uh, they, they sort of say the upper bound and lower bound. And we say that interstices, this interstices is elementary if uh, one of those, uh, uh, if this initial segment here in this cut is an elementary submodel. So I'm not saying that when it happens and how it happens, and if it, if it happens, then this interstice is called an elementary interstice and the picture is coming up. And uh, something that's not difficult to prove that it doesn't really matter whether you look at the left end of the interstice or the right end of the interstice. If one is elementary, that happens if and only if the other is elementary. So they're both, if one is elementary, they're both in elementary. So it's a big interstice, it's a big, um, it's a big uh, chunk of the model. And now the question is, when do those elementary interstices exist? Well, it turns out that if, uh, interstice is big enough. You know, none of, for example, if K uh, is the supremum of this column closure of zero, then there are no elementary interstices there because there is not enough room for them. But if I have an interstice that contains a gap, then already the whole inter interstice is a union of all the gaps in the interstice, which implies easily that the supremum of this interstice is an elementary cut. So if I find inter interstices that contain gaps, then it, it, it proves that those elementary in interstices exist. And the proof of this proposition is on the next slide, which should be on the next slide. Oh no, this is what I just said, the corollary that if, if an interst interstice contains a gap, then it's elementary. Okay, so here's the proof. And look, I, I really miss blackboards because uh, it's fun to draw those pictures and this is kind of shabbily drawn uh, proof here, but on the blackboard, you would actually see how I draw it. So you could follow, um, uh, you could follow the proof. Uh, I would have to animate this a little bit, uh, but you see that it's, it would be actually quite complicated to try to sort of do it in any kind of software, but I'm, I'm sure it can be done. Lawrence could have done it, but look, but this is, this is what, uh, what, what, the, what the proposition was saying. So here's the situation. Uh, we're looking at an element A here, and here's the interstice of A all of it, this whole interval. And now we assume that the, the interstice contain, contains a gap of A. And I have to show that, uh, and I take any other element now in the interstice, that's not in that gap. Maybe it's the interstice, is the gap already. So the proposition is uh, follows, but I take some element B that's not in the gap. And now I'm looking at the gap of this element. And uh, now suppose that it is not contained in the interstice. So, so that, that's marked by those marks here. Those are elements of K. Okay, so that means that there are no elements of K in the interstice, but finally down in, towards the interstice, there are some elements of K. So in particular, I go here and I above uh, and this gap of B, and in gap of B, I find some element C that is in K. Okay, but this is what gaps, this is the property of gaps that if you have 
any element uh, in the gap, then this column closure of that element inside the gap is both cofinal and co-initial. So in particular, uh, there's some term uh, T of C that takes you from C inside the gap, but that's a contradiction because T of C is also in K, but there was supposed to be nothing in K here. Okay, so this is a simple proof and it's easy to do it by, by, by drawing a picture, but it shows that once, once an interstice contains a gap, then it must contain the gaps of all of its elements. A similar argument applies to the other end. Okay. So now there is other thing that, that we will need. And this, uh, some of you know it, and this is the moving gaps lemma uh, of Henrik Kotlarski. And uh, in, in a simple for formulation, it says the following thing. And maybe I'll just follow what's happening here. I'll, I'll tell you what's happening here on the picture. So, and I'll tell you why it's called the moving gaps lemma. So it says for every A, so we take any element A in the model and for any element in the model, you will find an element B such that if you take the gap of B and if you take any element C in that gap, any element whatsoever, then C will be in this column closure of that, A will be in this column closure of that C. So for any A, there's a gap B such that now for any, any element in the gap, you, you can define A from, from C. So this is called moving gaps lemma because uh, what it proves is this, that if you have an automorphism, a non-trivial automorphism, if it moves something, so suppose you have an automorphism that moves some element A, it doesn't really matter where it moves it, maybe it just moves it a little bit. But if it's moved, if A is moved a little bit, then this whole gap that corresponds to B has to be moved outside of the gap and that is because uh, A is, if the gap state, oh, I see, the important part of the, of the proof that, that this uh, that gap here, we can assume that the gap contains uh, an element to realize in the type. So there's only one element to realize in the type. If I, if I move A, I also have to move B, and, uh, and, but it means that B cannot be moved to another gap. So if anything moves, then the whole, gap has to be moved somewhere. So that's why it's called the moving gaps lemma, but we will use it for something else. Can I move to the next slide? Is it fine? Yes. Okay. Oh, so, so this has this corollaries and I call this slide for final submodels cannot do uh, it. You, you, you want to sort of have some intuition about what those final models possibly can be, but the, the, this moving gaps lemma implies that if you have a final sum, if you have a model that would, be, would have to be cofinal that meets every gap, that it has to be M itself. You cannot have a cofinal submodel that just selects some element from each gap. If this happens, then, uh, then uh, it only, then, then K must be M. So in other words, it cannot happen for a proper uh, cofinal submodel. And it's a very easy corollary of this, of, of the moving gaps lemma, the way I, I formulated it. You, you can see how it is because every element eventually, every element is defined from some, but it's, it's clear, okay? So, but another corollary is that uh, elementary interstices always exist uh, for cofinal submodels. And that is because uh, there will be gaps uh, for any cofinal submodel, there will be gaps that don't meet K. So there will be interstices that contain whole gaps. So this, can, this must always happen. And I included two other corollaries that will not be used, uh, but also say something about what elementary cofinal submodels cannot be. Now, this is for any K, this is true. But if you assume in addition that K is regressively saturated, we have a cofinal elementary submodel of M that's regressively saturated, uh, then for every element that's above the definable elements, there must be B in the complement that realizes the same type. Or another way of saying this, which is, I think is sort of attractive way of saying this, if you have an unbounded type, like a type of this element here, and uh, realized in M, if all realizations of the type are in the submodel, then K must be equal to M. So you cannot have this kind of greedy cofinal submodel that already has all elements realizing a certain type. If K is recursively saturated and it has all elements realizing a given type, then it must be M. 
So in the Cannot proposition, any, any other way. in the proposition, A is not in K. Uh, in the proposition, or is in K. Uh, in this proposition, it can be anywhere. If it is in K, yeah. then, that is uh, then, then the conclusion is simple. No, ah, thank you. Right, right, right. One can be more specific where this A is supposed to be, but right, but any A. So but if A is not in K, then A can equal B. Right? That's right. So that's so it's still true. So the interesting case is where A is not in K. Okay. And that that then that's how it implies the this corollary. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, so now, so I told you that you know we're looking for for um, some uh, some more invariants for those cofinal submodels. So we just we just decided to look at one additional, and not just the structure of interstices, but just one interstice that we call a base. And uh, so we, we have the submodel K, and we call uh, this. Uh, so if it so happens, so, so this is my interstice of A. If this K has an interstice. A smallest interstice. And there's no guarantee that there will be a smallest interstice, but if there is one in you know, the natural ordering of the model, if there is one and if it is elementary, it's called the cut, this i plus of a here, is called the base of k. So what happens here is that uh, there are no uh, elementary interstices below, there might be elementary interstices above. If there is a smallest elementary, in interstice, this interstice is called the base. Not the interstice itself, but the cut it determines it's called a base. And from the definition, it follows that this cut is an, is an elementary cut. So, so bases are elementary cuts of the model. Mm -hmm. so, the, so this is base and the cut at the other end is also elementary cut, it's called the sub base. All right, so this is now a closer look uh, at what bases look like. And uh, you know, if someone wants to read the, the slides after, I, I also have it sort of uh, printed on the, on the next slide, what's going on. But this is what, what the situation is. What, this is what the typ typical situation is. And the typical means I take some generic cofinal submodel K. So what happens is there is somewhere, there is this greatest common initial segment. So M and K share this common initial segment. So there is nothing interesting happening here. And then there could be a gap of A. Okay? So, so those marks, they, they mark elements of K. So these little marks are the elements of K. So there are no elements of K in this interstice. This is the least elementary interstice. So it can happen that there are some elements of K above this greatest common initial segment. But if this happens, then uh, they all have to be contained in the gap of B. This gap of B can, can go, go a little. They, there cannot be more then a gap of B above the greatest common initial segment. This could go a little bit in this direction. And um, so okay, this is what's said here, that if you, this is the sub-base, this is the, this, this end of the interstice is the sub-base. If you look at uh, what's in the sub-base and not in the greatest common initial segment, it has to be included in some gap, if there is something, because it could be empty. Okay, so this, this, is, this is a general picture. This is what things look like. And, and that also follows that if this happens, that this interstice cannot itself be a gap because gaps are ordered densely. So if there is a gap here, well, if there is a gap here, then there cannot be a next gap right above it. So the, the, this interstice must contain more than just, than just one gap. Okay, so now, so now we want to uh, somehow classify or study those spaces. So there is a, a, what I call here a warm up. So something that's easier to handle, uh, handle are finitely generated submodels. So, so we'll not be talking about cofinal submodels because they cannot be finitely generated submodels, cannot be cofinal, but the, they are certainly also not cats. So, so they, will, they may or may not have bases. Uh, and it turns out that we can decide certain questions. Well, actually, we can decide much, but the best, the best solutions are in the case of uh, arithmetically saturated models. So, so this is just a, a reminder that those are the models where the standard system is closed under arithmetic comprehension. And so we have this theorem. 
that uh, if M is, are, are, M is arithmetically saturated, even only finitely generated sub, each finitely generated sub model has a base. So they do all do have bases. And, and it's if and only if, which means that in the case, what we now call just recursively desaturated, so models which are recursively desaturated and not arithmetically saturated, they will be uh, finitely generated some models without bases. And it's not difficult to see that they exist. Uh, okay, and um, and but this is so this is an if and only if, but in general, if you take R in any recursively saturated model, and K is finitely generated, and if it has a base, then it cannot be short. It must be tall. And I'm not giving proofs here. These are actually these are not difficult uh, facts to prove. This is all in, in our paper. Paper. So now the question is this: So we, wh whether in arithmetically saturated case or whether it is just recursively saturated case, uh, there are only uh, uh, countably many finitely generated submodels, and some of them have bases. So you have this countable family of cuts. And uh, and the question is: Can we identify them somehow? Do we know what all those bases of uh, finitely generated submodels are? So we have some answers to that. So first of all, uh, uh, the base uh, must be tall. And I, you know, if, if a proof is somewhat instructive and not complicated, I decided to include it. So he, here's the argument. Okay, so, uh, so I have a base. So remember that there is nothing in, a, you know, the base has this largest interstice in it and there are no elements of K in the base. And suppose you take some non-standard element that's in the base, but it's above all the definable elements. And now the point is to show that there is something above the gap of B that's still in the base. Okay, So it, to, to show that the base cannot be the supremum of the column closure of B. Okay? The gap of B cannot be the last gap in the, in the base. So, but now M is uh, finally degenerated. So can be generated from one element. So it's this column closure of a single element. And we look, look at this type. And so we want to squeeze an element. So we want to squeeze this element above this column closure of B. So these are the column terms Tn's. So n can is any n. You enumerate all this column closure. But you also want to squeeze it below uh, this part of K that sticks outside the base. So we want to say that x is lower than those terms on a, a, oh, and this is a typo, of course. What should this be? K. K. Should the b of m on the previous line also be k? Right. So, so this some, something bad happened, right? So this is k. Um, m has no base. <laughs> this, sorry about it. This is k and this is k. Now, um, some, you know, once you make, type your own slides, that, then you become blind to them. So you look at them and I, I know what they're saying, but they are not saying what they're supposed to be saying. This is the base of K and this is, this is K, <laughs> this uh, finality generated submodel. So, so now, so, so we're squeezing this new element above this column closure of B, but below those elements of K that are above the base. And this is, so, you know, so this is not a recursive type because of this condition here. It's not a recursive condition. But uh, it's recursive in a type that's realized. So this is recursive in the type of AB. So that's enough recursive saturation allows that. So, and it's clearly finitely realizable. So it's realized. And if you take any element C that realizes the type, it gives you an element C that's above this column closure of B and it's still in the base of K as it should be. Okay, so, so base, bases must be tall, okay? Oh, Okay, so so now, but um, so if they if they are tall, so they cannot be short. But the question is, can they be co short? Which means to be co short means to be tall, but to have a least gap above. So can a base can a low uh, can a uh, co short cut be a base of finitely generated submodel? And this becomes more interesting because uh, for that we have to introduce uh, this uh, concept here. Of, uh, I think this was already introduced in some old paper of G that uh, we wrote with Jim and Henry Klarski of quasi-selective types. 
Uh, so a, a type of V is quasi-selective. It has this property that if you look at the skull enclosure of V uh, above the definable elements, all those elements that are undefinable, they all have to be contained in the gap of B. They are not spread around. They all sit inside the gap of B. So, so this is called quasi-selective. And th this is actually exactly something that's needed, that uh, the, there is, there is equi equivalence that an initial elementary cut is uh, an elementary cost short cut. And you have those, those equivalent conditions. This cut happens to be a base of some finitely generated submodel, if and only if it happens to be in, in it's, it's short. So there is the smallest gap in the complement, and it's an infimum of a gap. And this, the, there is a B in that gap that realizes a quasi selective type. So that's how we recognize uh, those bases. And then uh, one has to show that uh, it's, uh, it's a non trivial theorem in a sense. It's not difficult to prove, but it's non trivial in the sense that there are gaps that do not realize quasi, quasi selective types. So there will be cuts of this form here, uh, infimum of a gap, but if, if there is no element in that gap that realizes a quasi-selective type, it cannot be a base of a, um, of a finality generated submodel. Okay, so now, uh, so what about other? So this was the case of co-short uh, cuts, but what about not uh, general cuts? So, so now we have a complete answer, but not for uh, all models, but again, in the case of arithmetically saturated models. So if you have a cut that's not co-short and you wonder, well, can this be a base of some finitely generated uh, submodel, then it happens to be if and only if, if I is an infimum of an omega coded sequence. So this is a simpler condition. And again, so it disqualifies various cuts. These are the only cuts that can be, that can be bases. So, but as a corollary of this, there is something that we know about cuts that, that look like that in arithmetically saturated models. Then uh, it, it, it shows that in, uh, for finitely generated models in this case, there is only one type of, the, of a base. Well, they, they are spread all over the, uh, the model, but uh, a model M, but they, form, they all form the same isomorphism type as a pair. They all look alike, there's only one type of a base in this in this case, in arithmetic saturated case. And the question is, now previously we, we had something that says said something about condition being equivalent to arithmetic saturation. And one of the questions we have in the paper is whether this corollary uh, is actually equivalent to M being arithmetically saturated. So in other words, it always falls in just recursively saturated case. Okay, so now we're getting to more interesting stuff, and so, so, some more involved proof will be will come up, so they, they will not be given. But this is uh, a proposition that, again, I wish I could draw this all on the blackboard so you could see how I'm drawing it. So it's impossible to read what it says, and maybe you can, but, but, but here, is, here is the situation. So now we're going to the situation where uh, general case with K can be element, any elementary submodel. And uh, so what happens if you have this situation? You start with three cuts. I1 is just a cut that's closed under addition and multiplication, something that we need for Smolinsky's theorem to declare that there is some model K such that uh, the greatest common initial segments of M and K is I1. And then we want to talk about interstices, large elementary interstices. So I need another cut I2, uh, that's an elementary cut and another cut above it, I3, and that's all I need. So this one is just an, a cut, not, not elementary, closed and under additional multiplication. Uh, now in this picture here, there, is, there has to be this distance here. That was from this picture that I was showing you before, that if this is supposed to be an interstice, then this part here, this could be an element of K, but all of it has to be contained in the gap of some element. So that's an additional condition on the situation. So it's not, it's not far from I1 to I2, but then I2 is an elementary cut and I3 is an elementary cut. And here, this is this case when I have a sub model K and there is no least gap. So this is in this not co-short case. I3 is not co-short. 
So then the proposition says, and it's really a proposition that this is like a compilation of things we know about this situation, then actually there will be a submodel K such that this is greater than common initial segment, and this is this becomes the interstice. And so this this I this this becomes the base of K and this becomes a sub-base of K. So in, in, in this case, under these assumptions, we know essentially what needs to be known. So we know how those things can be spread inside inside the model. Questions? Yeah. Okay. So, and again, this is what's in red. I, I mark things that are important because this all works fine when this K, uh, this I3 is not call short. So you have a question. So can oh, sure. what happens when uh, this I is call short? Can it be a base? And when can this happen? And again, now K, again, now K is always an arbitrary submodel, not necessarily finitely generated. And that's another interesting case because we need another concept of a type. And I don't think this has been uh, defined anywhere prior to our paper. Because and it is defined here because it turned out we need. So we want to characterize those cuts, uh, co-short cuts that can be a base. And uh, so the definition is of, of a type. What, what is a semi-regular type? So a semi-regular type uh, is a type such that if you have an element realizing the type, and then you look at the uh, infimum of the gap. So infimum of the gap in the recursively saturated models is never semi-regular semi -regular because you have those coded omega sequences inside the gap of A, but we're not talking about semi-regularity in M, but we're talking about semi-regularity just in this column closure of A that is not recursively saturated. So this can happen. Types like that exist. So you want the infimum of the gap of A always when you realize the type A to be, to be semi-regular in this column closure. So this is like a local property of this column closure. Okay, so so it's, for example, easy to see that minimal types are semi-regular. And the uh, theorem says uh, what, uh, what those semi-regular types were designed for, that again, it's in the case of arithmetically saturated models, that uh, if you look at a gap of M, and this is supposed to be this, these are core co short cuts. So we think of this gamma as being the least uh, gap in the complement of the cut and so the following conditions are equivalent. The gamma contains an element realizing a semi-regular type. And this happens if and only if, if uh, there is an elementary submodel for which the infimum of the, of the gap becomes the base. So I think it's nice. So, it's, so it's, it, it shows that this notion of the base uh, of a submodel has some combinatorial meaning. Something happens. We can identify some cuts that are bases, and we can disqualify some cuts that, that cannot be bases. And there is more into those theorems because we also know about what's happening in just recursively desaturated case, but those are not equivalences uh, right here, like here. Okay, and uh, and so now I'm I'm I'm, I'm coming so uh, to, to really the, the highlight of what, what it is. This is what what our aim was when we were sort of start uh, sort of starting thinking about about questions here, that. Uh, so this is the main theorem that I, that I want to talk about. So, so Smorinsky shows that you can get this great variety of theories when you vary the greatest common initial segment of a model and its elementary cofinal or uh, elementary submodel here. So you, have, you get continue many theories of this of the of J. But what happens when you fix one of those J? So the main one of the main theorems. But it's not really the, the more advanced, the most advanced theorem in the paper. But here's the one that says that if you fix one of those J's, but it happens to be strong cut, then we can still get uh, continuum uh, many theories of the pair, where K is a cofinal submodel. In addition, K will be actually isomorphic to M, and the greatest common initial segment is fixed. So we fix this one isomorphism invariant, but there will be other isomorphism invariants to, to vary. And it will give us actually, well, the full diversity. And as you can probably guess, basis will be, will be involved. So, so I, I will, I, I have, I, uh, I have a, okay, I went the wrong way. So I have an outline of the proof. So the, for the rest of the talk, and uh, I will probably finish before my, before the time, uh, for the rest of the talk, I'll give a short outline of how the proof goes. So it's really based 
it's on two lemmas. And the first lemma is something that uh, is, is, is simple, but uh, uh, when I saw it for the first time, Jim came up with this lemma, I think even for, for something else that he was doing. And um, it, it's somewhat surprising that, uh, you know, finiteness is not something that's usually recognized uh, in a first order way, but here there is a sentence uh, in the language of the pair uh, that can be used to recognize if a confinal submodel. So now I moved. No, this has nothing to do with uh, with recursive saturation and other things. So now n, I changed the. You know, there are no n. It's not n and k. This is some any model m and any k m is now a confinal submodel of n, and uh, we want to know whether the extension is uh, finitely generated over m. And it turns out this can be recognized uh, in the first order way. And actually the sentence that recognizes it, it's, it's here at the bottom. So it's a very simple, there's nothing advanced. It's a simple sentence that is telling you this. So let, let's see how it goes. So, no, so if I can find an extension and suppose it's finitely generated. So N is this column closure of M together with this generator A. So that means that every element of N is of the form some column term on A and some B uh, in N. Okay, but now, if you look at a single term and you vary the Bs, then the following happens. That so here's the generator and you have your term. So uh, we take a C that's larger than A and C is in M. And so it will be another D in M that codes in M this whole sequence. So you look at all the values of TXB for X less than C. But this coding happens in M, in the, in the ground model. But then you take that code, uh, so this is D, and that code is also in N. So you look at what uh, the code D calls in N. So in particular, you know, by elementarity, well, it's it, it's defined, and it tells you that the uh, that the eighth term of the that's what the sequence is. The eighth term of the sequence coded by D is the value of TAB. That's by elementarity of the extension. So now it follows that to generate n, you don't need all those column terms. You just need this one column term. Okay. So you, you look at all possible d's. Well, the d's that matter are those d's that, that code these particular sequences. But you can look at all d's in them, and then you just need this one generator a here. So these are the terms. So instead of using all those k a b, it's enough to use d, a single uh, single uh, parameter, and you run. Uh, no, sorry, single A, single parameter, and, and we run through all the Ds, single term. And then the sentence says, well, it says what it is, that there is an X. So the X is the generator, so that, so that every element uh, of the model uh, is of this form, of this form, DA. This X that exists is this D. Uh, this X, uh, uh, the X that exists is the generator, way and A, and the Z is the code. So that's D and every Y is of the form DA. So I like it. So now, but but, in, but the up, upshot of, of all of this is that we can recognize in a first order way, finitely generated final extensions of models of PA. Where, so that's lemma where one. Did C, where did the parameter, where did the parameter C go? Uh, no, the C went nowhere, but it was important that it was in M and, that, and that's because D needs to be in M. So, a is not in M, but C is in M. So this whole sequence is defined in M. So once I have D, I don't need C. C is the length of D. Mm -hmm. So I use C to get D. Ah, got and, after that, and after that, I don't need C any, anymore. OK, Thank so you. this was lemma one. And this is, and lemma two is from. Uh, uh, classical results of uh, Laurie and, and Jeff Paris, something about uh, feeling uh, final extension of, of, of our final extensions feeling cuts. Uh, and in the case, uh, in the case of uh, strong elementary initial segments, uh, you can always find a final extension of M that feel the sort of that add elements directly above J and there will be always this what we now call a base, uh, and uh, in, in, and then the strength 
is being preserved. So if you look at the base of such an extension, it's still strong. So this is an old result of, of Kirby and Harris that you can always do it. And this is slightly modified uh, to get the following lemma that will be that you in the proof. So, so we're back to, to the case where M is regards, countable with regards to desaturated and J is an elementary uh, cut that is strong. So then we can, and now I'll be talking not about cuts in M, I'll be extending M. So there are two elementary extensions, cofinal, both cofinal, and J is the uh, greatest common initial segment for those extensions. And uh, those cofinal extensions, well, they're proper extensions, but they are not adding anything. They're not adding any new coded subsets. And again, that's possible due to strength. And uh, then uh, by analyzing the proof, you show that in this case, you have the basis, both extensions have. Uh, so M now becomes a cofinal submodel if M1 and M becomes cofinal submodel in M2. And those two bases exist. And uh, moreover, they are, they are generated this way. So you take uh, M1 is this column closure of M plus the base, and uh, M2 is this column closure of uh, 2 plus the base. And now it can be done in such a way, this is like one is finitely generated and one is finitely generated because it can be done in one step and M2 will be not finitely generated because will be the uh, limit of an omega construction. So that's not difficult to do. Anyway, so there is some technology that related to strong uh, elementary cuts that goes into, into this proof, but this is sort of all uh, implicit in, in this uh, results of uh, Kirby and Ferris. So now how, how, we, how do we use that? So this is, this is the way it, it goes. Look, so, so objective is to, to start with J and to construct lots and lots of cofinal extensions uh, such that uh, cofinal submodels such the greatest common initial segment of the extension and the model is just J and the theories are supposed to be different. But to do this, we'll do, this is the standard trick. We, we, we construct uh, omega chains of uh, elementary chains of uh, cofinal extensions uh, using lemma two. And uh, so, in each step, so this is the inductive step that you can start with the model you have and uh, the greatest common initial segment will be always J here. And uh, well, well, you, you well, it's more complicated than that. But well, now, now, well, I, I, I wish I, I drew a picture for this one, although the picture gets somewhat more complicated. And, so, so the whole the whole point. Let me let me go go back to the lemma. The idea is something like this: that you do it once, mm -hmm. and you get those new cuts. Okay, so this is this is what happens in step one. Then you get those two cuts, and uh, well, you can get either one or the other. You can make it either finitely generated or not finitely generated. But the whole thing in this construction is that this base is still a strong elementary cut. So then you can repeat the same construction, starting with the cut as your base case, as your J. And you construct the next final extension and the next final extension. And you have a choice in doing that. So you always go up. So you make, so you make greatest common initial segment longer and longer, but there's always plenty of, of room to do that. And uh, okay, and you have those bases. And so this is this is what it says. The next one is continuous. The previous one will in all the previous happened before it comes to map with and or because extensions were based here. What it becomes important that those models are column closure of M, the ground model, and then and then the base. So you don't want in, to include those any new elements in, when you continue those cofinal extensions. Once you build your new base in the next model, uh, this, uh, well, this is already included. You don't want to change. You want to enlarge this base. So the greatest common initial segment is, is the previous base. 
Okay, and so th that's, that's what we say here. Th but this is what happens at the first stage. And, and here's the, the thing. You, you select a subset uh, of natural numbers and uh, add the step M and you either make a finitely generated uh, elementary extension or infinitely generated elementary extension depending on whether N is in X or not. So now what happens is you take the union of those uh, of those models and again th there is some standard machinery that you show and that is because of what's happening here we, we haven't in this construction we never added any new sets j so we have regards countable regards to be saturated models that are isomorphic so n x and m are isomorphic but moreover i can find an isomorphism that's identity on j so the par, pair n x and j is isomorphic with m j so in other words this whole situation that we constructed here can be moved moved by that isomorphism inside M because eventually I want to have elementary submodels of M. So it means that this whole sequence of elementary submodels, they all live as, as a confined submodels of M through this isomorphism here. And now by this condition uh, that I do finitely generated extensions only for Ns in X, this follows that if I have, if I have two subsets of, uh, of two sets of natural numbers, then models will be different. There will be no isomorphic because I made, if you look at the construction, you, we have made a difference exactly at this point. But due to this lemma one, the one that recognizes which extensions are, uh, which extensions are finitely generated and which are not in, in by just a single uniform sentence that, that uh, decides that, then if you look at those chains, the first order theory of like in, like in this case, you look at the first order theory of this uh, n x together, which, uh, which uh, recognizes which of those uh, elementary submodels are finite. Uh, in other words, you know, I'm, I'm sort of again. There's much more to say that I'm saying, but not that much more. Anyway, that this whole history up to a stage n can be reconstructed in a first order way, step by step, and at some point you see the difference between how these models are made already by looking at the first of the theory. So you don't need to know the isomorphism type. This sentence sigma will tell you uh, whether n was in x or not by just looking at the theory of, of the model. So this, this concludes so this. Can I, can I ask real, real quick, um, the, the, the pair or the, 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 the thing that you're using here is that, uh, um, that, that you can recognize finitely generated models with a single Sentence is that, mm -hmm. is that okay right. from, from the pair? Okay. For for the cofinal submodels, but 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 by by having this, I also this sort of very well defined construction, so I can look at its finite stages and I can sort of see what's happening in those stages. Mm -hmm. And and that that is that is partly due to this. Okay. Each next model is a column closure of the previous one. All right, so, so th there is more in the paper and th there, is, there is the last uh, section of the paper that Jim wrote, because then you can ask all kind of other questions. Uh, this is my, my last slide, slide here. Last slide here, I forgot to produce the one that says thank you. So I'll say thank you in words later, but there is also a theorem that says, okay, so in this construction, uh, make this, uh, okay, let's go back to the theorem. So, so at the end, this isomorphic cock one but none of them is uh, fine. You know, they have the very structure of element models. And so, so Jim looked at it and, and wondered, you know, there are other invariants that you want to include in, in those in those considerations. So what about if another restriction would be you want a fixed J but you want to want to say that the Do you see me? I got disconnected for a moment. Yep, you're back. So the other is isomorphism invariant. So for example, you can look at the lattice of intermediate structures between K and M 
and you want to say, well, can I can I fix it as well? And Jim could. So this is for the Paris MK where the lattice is, uh, is a three element lattice. But I would have to check that. And that seems like an ultimate result. And the open problem is, can we make it a two element lattice? So, so th th this becomes kind of esoteric, but there are many other questions that can be asked. But I guess this is where I should end. And I want to say thank you. Thank you. Let's clap using our emojis. All right, so questions. Qu Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I have a, oh, I have a question, quick question. In the case of X, a subset of integers, um, if X is all the integers, and then I take out zero and one, wouldn't I get the same results? No, because you already see the difference in the first stage. Oh, right, because there is this history that you know you change these models you have to see how they go up so the how go it will go three steps up tell you that Okay, so you took out zero and one, and, and then, then you take the other. Can you repeat your question? Yeah, um, X is just a subset one, of omega, one, right? One X. One. Suppose it's, it is omega. Right. Everything. Does the construction work okay. if it is omega? 